I want to read a hundred books this year and I plan on spending next to no money doing it. So if you'd like to learn how to read more or just want to know how and why I plan to take on this massive challenge, stay tuned. I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I believe that you can meet all of your money goals with the aid of a budget. I make videos every week on how to manage your money, pay off debt, and live the life of your dreams on less. If you'd like to learn how to level up this year, go ahead and subscribe below. And if you like reading or have a New Year's resolution to read more this year, give this video a like. I loved reading as a child, and I'm quite certain the reason that I have to wear glasses is because I would stay up way too late at night reading under the covers with a flashlight and develop some very serious eye strain. Thumbs up if you're not the only one who did this. In fact, my mom used to take away my books instead of TV to punish me, but as an adult, without real intention to read, I often go weeks or months without reading anything. I'm distracted by TV or busy phases of life, and honestly, I feel like my life is less full. Realizing this, over the past two years, I've casually tracked my reading on my phone, sometimes forgetting to log a book here or there, but mostly getting them down. And according to my records, I read 40 to 50 books per year in 2017 and 2018. This isn't counting any books I started and didn't finish, either due to the library loan expiring or me losing interest. This may seem like a lot of books to some of you, especially when I just said I go through bouts of not reading at all. But I would say that at least half of those books are kind of short works of fiction that take less than a few hours to read and they aren't very dense in content. <laughs> I call these brain candy books and I'll go more into what I'm choosing to read this year later, but I don't particularly think they count that much. <laughs> Reading is so great for the mind, the heart, the soul, and I feel like I've always been a reader. If I'm not in some other world or learning from other people, I feel incomplete. Also, books are awesome and we can learn so much from them. So many people have dumped their best tips and knowledge and so much experience into this physical thing that we can access. I love learning. Business and finance books will help me grow Budget Girl. Personal development books help me grow myself. And fiction will make me more creative in everything I do. All the books that I read this year will help me in my day job as a writer as I absorb other writers' styles, vocabulary, and wit. I also want to watch less TV, which has fewer personal benefits than reading, and I waste way too much time doing it. This challenge will give me an alternative that will still be relaxing. I do have one concern about this challenge. I really don't want to make reading into a chore, which will completely ruin it for me. Anytime I was assigned to do a book report in school, even if I loved the book originally, I ended up hating it. Uh, it took the, me out of the world and made it work, and I really want to try to keep the joy of reading through this. So how am I going to do it? especially for next to no money. My current primary means of reading material is library books, but digital versions. I have four library cards and overdrive, so I regularly put myself on holds lists, wish lists, and I get books automatically checked out to my account, which I then get an email, and then I download it either to my phone if it's an audiobook, or my Kindle if it's an ebook. I also use BookBub, and nothing in this is sponsored, for like free kind of brain candy books, uh, which I get to keep and they're totally free. Very occasionally I'll buy a discounted book through either BookBub or purchase a sequel to a free book that I got for a few dollars, but I never really spend more than $5 on a book. Uh, next, I have a decent pile of personal finance books, which have been either gifted to me or bought at events from other people in the space who I wanna support. This is the only place where I'll spend like full price on a book and I do try to get them at early discount um, because I just really want to support the other people that are in my space. I'm also doing a month long trial of Kindle Unlimited which will help me only in the first month of the year but I've also found their selection to be lacking and don't plan to continue it. I've considered getting an Audible membership but I don't necessarily think it's worth the $15 a month cost for one audiobook when if I keep up with my library holds and kind of try to stagger them, 
I will have more than enough to read completely free. This is purely a cheapskate response and I probably could have gotten Audible to sponsor this video, but I didn't because paying full price for books that were written by someone I don't know hurts me deeply. <laughs> Finally, I am part of a book club that meets every other week and reads about nine books a year. This is the least cost efficient part of my current reading habit because when we choose the books, there's often not time to get on the library wait list to get them. And I sometimes end up paying a discounted price for them just by scouring the internet, eBay, whatever. Next, how will I find time to read? Currently, I do most of my reading at night before bed, and during this time, I prefer to read fiction or via audiobooks, which I listen to on my commute when I'm getting ready in the morning and sometimes when I'm grocery shopping or like running errands. And this is when I prefer to read like nonfiction or personal development or finance books. In order to double my consumption of books this year, I will likely have to A, actually log all the books I'm reading, B, actively keep my Kimball and phone queued up with books to consume as sometimes I'll find time but then we'll have nothing to read, C, add in reading time in place of nighttime TV, D, maybe read in the mornings or on my lunch break, E, actually carry a physical book around because those have sadly fallen out of my life just with the ease of digital media and I'll need to have one on my possession to read them. Next, what am I going to read? Currently I try to read at least one business book a month, but I also enjoy personal development books, celebrity autobiographies, especially if they voice their own audiobook, humor, sci-fi, and what I talked about, the brain candy books. These are somewhat silly books that will never in a lifetime make the bestsellers list. They often involve a dystopian universe where one person has to fight to save it or a magic imbued land where a girl has to go compete to be a princess, which is supercomputers, extremely one dimensional characters. Give it to me, all of it. I will read it voraciously. Sometimes these are meant for teens. I do not care. I get these books free from BookBub or the library. I read them like candy. And I have very strange dreams following them, but I enjoy it. I feel no shame about it. And I don't care if you judge me for it. It's good, clean fun. And I always tell myself it could be drugs, but it's not. So I'll continue to read all of those and plan to scale up the business and personal development side while maybe lowering my brain candy consumption a little. I've also found that when you read regularly, it gets easier to get through the more dense stuff because your brain is used to it. So I won't be giving up the candy, but a little bit of balance will be sought after this year. There's also a few things I'm not going to be reading. Mysteries, histories, and romance books. Never been a fan, and I don't see that changing this year. Finally, I'm not gonna leave you without some tips on how to read more this year. Tip number one, get the library card and download Overdrive or Libby. These are apps that allow you to borrow digital audiobooks and ebooks for free and read them on your phone, computer, or e-reader. Digital loans expire automatically, so you will never pay a cent in overdraft fees. Hashtag frugal. Number two, get thee yet another library card. Many cities and states will allow you to get different library cards in different counties, and all of these libraries keep their digital catalog separate so you have access to more if you sign up for more. These usually require you to go to the library in person and re-up them yearly, but they're free. Also, if you have a friend who is in a different state, perhaps you can do a little library card swap. Remember, digital has no fees, so you'll never make them pay your library fees. One of my friends actually lives in Los Angeles and LA has the best digital library. I can log in to her account and check out audiobooks and ebooks to my phone and their catalog is huge. It's amazing. Number three, be willing to wait for books. I have been number 250 in line to wait for a new release, but it'll get to me eventually. Also, put yourself on the hold list for multiple versions of the book. Large print, audiobook, they can, the wait list can be very different lengths. Next tip, cultivate your holds and your wish list. Anytime you scroll through and see something you like, put a hold on it or put a wish list on it, and then something will be available for you every single time you log in. Tip number five, 
sign up for BookBub, linked below, or another discount free ebook list. What you do is you select what you're interested in and they will email you daily or weekly with free or highly discounted books in those genres. Often bestsellers even go crazy cheap for a limited amount of time and those directories keep track of when things go on sale. Number six, ask friends for recommendations or to borrow books. My book club is amazing in that they always choose books that I would never have found in a million years and often I love it. Also free loans from friends will cultivate friendship and give you a chance to talk about the book. Pro tip, always return a borrowed book in the same condition you got it in and with a small thank you gift. Some homemade cookies or a bottle of $3 Aldi wine is always appreciated. Speaking of recommendations, I would love to get yours. Please leave me a comment below with your reading goals for the year and what book you would love for me to read in my hundred. I'd also love to know what kind of books are your favorite. Thanks so much for watching and if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button to be part of the Frugal family and hit that like button if you liked this video. See you next time. Bye. Slightly terrified this giant pile of books is going to fall on me. <laughs> it's precarious.